Of all the well-covered secrets of the royal family, there is one that has been successfully shut off from the public eye for a very long time. This is the relationship between one of its members and the German Nazi party. Edward VIII was known to have a touchy relationship with the rest of the royal family. While this was largely due to his love life, we're only now learning that he had a notorious low-key relationship with the greatest villain of the 20th century, Adolf Hitler. Welcome to the Told You Another Story channel. In today's video, we'll be talking about the story of the Nazi royal. In the 1930s, then, King Edward was every woman's dream. He gave up his title and abdicated the throne for the sake of love, and many thought of this as romantic. His mistress at the time, Wallace Simpson, was a two-time divorcee, and for that, other royal family members and British officials deemed her unfit to become queen of the most powerful empire in the world. King Edward thought of different ways to have what he wanted, be king and marry the woman of his dreams. However, he soon realized that it was not possible, and in 1936, the king announced that he was abdicating the throne. According to him, it meant nothing if he couldn't be a king with the support of the woman he loved. After just a year of being crowned king, Edward made the famous public announcement, I have found it impossible to carry the heavy burden of responsibility and to discharge my duties as king, as I would wish to do without the help and support of the woman I love. The former king was demoted to the Duke of Windsor and was free to marry whoever he wanted. Six months later, the Duke married Wallace Simpson in France. The public attention on Edward was no longer because he was the most important member of the royal family, but because he gave it all away for a woman who did not meet their standards. The reaction from the citizens of the country was cruel at best, but it didn't matter because they had the support of each other. They traveled the world together, and while most of their trips were lavish, none attracted as much attention as their trip to Germany in 1937, just two years before World War II broke out. The Duke and Duchess of Windsor met with their family members of the Nazi party, and this wasn't a good look for the British royal family. This was the first of a long string of events that showcased a connection between the Duke and the then German Chancellor, Adolf Hitler. Because of this, rumors started spreading that the former king was a supporter of the Nazis and their wild propaganda, and that his wife was a Nazi spy who was hell-bent on corrupting their beloved prince. In any case, a meeting between a prominent member of the royal family and the dictator of Germany was not a good idea, especially when there was a war coming. To prevent any uprising, the royal family covered up Edward's meeting with the Nazis until the end of the World War. Many historians have named this the biggest cover-up in history and rightfully so. Although the full details of the meeting aren't known, there were concerns that Edward had sympathy for the Nazis. On the other hand, the Nazis sought to establish a connection between them and a member of the royal family. What better person than a disgraced king who had been reduced to a duke? There are accounts that state that Hitler promised Edward that if they became allies, he would reinstate the former king as ruler of England after his planned attack on the country. The Duke and Duchess of Windsor were received in Germany with open arms. They had meetings and dinners with Nazi officials and even had a meeting with Hitler at his private residence in Berkhof. The details of the meeting with Hitler were kept secret. As the story became known to the public, some people believed Edward criticized Hitler's methods in the meeting, while others believed the former king showed his support. Judging from the events of the following days and the information discovered after the war, the latter might have been the case. The Duke and Duchess spent two weeks in Germany, and during that time, they were hailed by supporters of the Nazis at every public appearance they made. The Nazi supporters greeted the Duchess of Windsor with smiles, waves, and curtsies which were warmer treatments than she received from citizens of Britain. However, this wasn't as disturbing as the greetings Edward received. The Germans would often greet the Duke with the Nazi salute, which he would return. Pictures of Edward returning the Nazi salute spread across the country, and this caused the British monarchy and government great embarrassment. It also came to their knowledge that Hitler stated that Wallace Simpson would have made a great queen. Although the Duchess denied receiving such a compliment, the British government had caught a whiff of Hitler's plans, and they knew that the Duke and Duchess were a central part of this plan. Ahead of the fast-approaching war, the couple was seen as advocates for Hitler and his cause, which made them a liability to the royal family. The royal family feared that this would happen for a very long time. Ever since Edward was a child, he had displayed an unusual level of interest in German politics. At the time, British royals were allowed to marry only members of the German royal family. Therefore, Edward had German ancestry and explored his German roots unlike any other member of the royal family. 
As he grew older, he developed an interest in German politics and continued to give his unfiltered opinion on the political situation of the country. Long before meeting with Hitler and top Nazi officials, Edward expressed his support for the Nazis' way of running the country. Three years later before he became king, he made a disturbing statement in a meeting with Prince Louis Ferdinand. He said, It is no business of ours to interfere in Germany's affairs, either regarding Jews or anything else. This clearly showed that Edward was indifferent to the persecution of the Jews, which had already begun at the time, and it was an alarming comment coming from anyone, especially the future king of the British Empire. He went on to say dictators are very popular these days. We might want one in England before long. Considering the fact that Edward made all these statements in the past, it is understandable why the royal family was concerned about his meeting with the most wicked dictator of their time. The prime minister, who was also scared for the future of the country, ordered the intelligence agency MI5 to keep tabs on Edward and monitor his relationship with people who were a threat to the country. After the war broke out, the surveillance on Edward grew tighter and was taken up, this time by Winston Churchill. Churchill had access to all the telegrams and phone conversations between the Duke and the Nazis, however they were kept classified because the government didn't want the members of the public to know the extent of the relationship between their former king and Adolf Hitler. This matter made the British government very paranoid and they tried to keep Edward out of Hitler's grasp by any means necessary. In an attempt to do so, Churchill suggested that the Duke become governor of the Bahamas. This meant that he would be forced to leave Europe and the royal families would not be concerned about him being in territories influenced by Hitler or the Nazis. At first, Edward rejected Churchill's proposal on the grounds that he was a member of the royal family and the British army. Therefore, it was his duty to fight for his country during the war. While his reasons sounded noble, Churchill still did not trust the Duke, and he was ultimately forced to leave Europe. However, this did not cut the Duke's ties with Hitler, and the British government did not find out until after the war. They discovered a classified document that stated that the Nazis reached out to Edward on his way to the Bahamas and told him that he was unsafe as the British family was plotting to assassinate him. They convinced him to take a detour to Spain where the Nazi forces could protect him and the Duchess while promising he would be reinstated as king after the war. This document was kept secret for many years by the British government for obvious reasons. Although Edward did not go along with the plans of the Nazis, the document was hard proof of the extent of the Duke's relationship with the tyrants. Maybe with a little more push, Edward would have yielded, which would have changed the course of history in a way that should only be imagined. Thank you for watching. Hit us up in the comments section and give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos.